continuing off of section 8.3, we have Wallace's formulas, which tells us that if n is odd and n is greater than or equal to 3, for this kind of expression, specifically 0 to pi over 2 and cosine with an odd power greater than or equal to 3, then you basically are just mewing this formula up until you get to where your denominator equals this power. So for instance, if I was raising cosine to the fifth power, I would only need to have these first two fractions because this denominator here would match that power. However, if that power was a nine power, I would probably have one more fraction here to multiply eight over nine, okay? Now, number two is if n is even, then you have from zero to pi halves, cosine of n, where n is greater than or equal to two, then you have this formula, okay? And again, n is in the denominator. So wherever n stops, that's where you're gonna stop doing these fractions. So it's one over two, three over four, five over six, seven over eight, all until you get into that even exponent. Difference here is that one, you start off with one over two versus over here, you start off with two over three. Another difference is, is that all of these things do end up needing to get multiplied by pi halves. So it's very important whether you know the exponent is odd or even, okay? So you know where to start and you know whether or not you're gonna have to multiply by pi over two. Um, this formulas, the same formulas are also valid for sine. You just literally replace this with sine n of the x and sine n of the x and the same odd and even rules apply. So for our problem here, example four, it says use Wallace's formula to evaluate the integral. So we have our bounds zero to pi halves, just like we should, and we have sine to the power of six. Now six is even, which means I need to use these formulas in the second notation. So I'm gonna use one over two, three over four, five over six, and I'm gonna stop at five over six because this denominator matches my power here. But because I'm using the second rule, because the exponent is even, I do have to multiply by a pi over two. So if I start reducing, I think I can only reduce this one here. So that goes in there twice, three goes in here once. I end up with five pi over 1632. And if it accepts the exact answer, then this is good. If it accepts a decimal answer, then just plug it in your calculator and figure out what the decimal answer would be. 4909 is what I would end up having to round it to. Okay, so depending on the form that your computer wants the answer, that will be what you type in there. Now, we also have integrals involving powers of secant and tangent. Okay, so when the power of secant is even, you save a secant squared factor for du and then convert all the remaining secants into tangents. Okay, that's the secant is an even power. When the power of tangent is odd, save the secant tangent factor and convert the remaining factors to secants. U will equal secant. When there are no secant factors and the power of tangent is even, convert a tangent squared factor to a secant squared factor and then let U equal tangent squared. When the integral is all secants, only with an odd and positive exponent, use integration by parts. And then number five, if all of the above does not apply, convert to sines and cosines, and then just go follow the sines and cosines rule. So let's take a look at a couple of examples that we have for the secants and tangent functions. So here, we definitely cannot, um, save a secant in this particular problem because the secant is inside of a square root. So we can't do that. So what we do need to do is we need to convert the tangent cubed. So what we're going to do is take out one of those tangents And I'm going to write this secant to the one half power. 
Now this isn't enough quite yet because no trig function has a derivative of tangent. However, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So if somehow I can pull out a secant tangent, actually, I think the best thing to be would to put one in and take one out at the same time. And this will help us in the problem later. So if you put one secant in, you have to take one secant out. So if I'm gonna multiply by a secant, I also have to divide by a secant. And I'm running out of space here. So let me clean that up on my next step. On my next step, I'm going to combine these two together and I'm also gonna convert this, combine these two together, but convert it to secants. So let's see over here, one plus tangent is secant squared, which means tangent is secant squared x minus one. And then the bottom, I will have secant to the three halves power. And then I'll have secant x tan x dx. And so then if I separate each one of these over secant to the three halves and simplify the exponents, Four halves take away three halves will give me secant to the one half. And then here I'll get secant to the negative three halves x. And then secant x, tan x, dx. So then let's do the u substitution. So if u is secant, and du would be this. We're going to have u to the 1 half minus u to the negative 3 halves du. Apply our power rule. We get u to the 3 halves times 2 over 3 minus u to the negative 1 half times negative 2 over 1 and plus c because it is an indefinite um, integral. So we get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves mine or actually plus because a negative and a negative two u to the negative one half plus c so if we back sub this is two thirds secant to the three halves x plus two secant to the negative one half x plus c and there we have it for that one now for example six we have an even number of secants, so we want to use that for our du. So what we're gonna do is separate that secant into secant squared dx. And the other secant squared is gonna go off to the side for the d du. Now this secant squared is going to get converted into um, tangents. So 1 plus tangent squared of 3x times tangent cubed of 3x times secant squared x dx. Now remember, this is your du. So we definitely want to distribute this tan cubed. And so we end up with tan cubed 3x plus, oh, I messed up. This should be the same angle, 3x. Therefore, this should be the same angle, 3x. And then when I distribute here, I get tan to the fifth of 3x times secant squared to the 3x dx. So now if I let u equal tan to the 3x, du will equal secant squared to the 3x, but by chain rule, times 3 dx. So I need to divide by 3, and I get secant squared 3x dx will get replaced by du over 3. So this, after um, u sub, will become u to the third power plus u to the fifth power, and then du over 3. So we get one third, <clears throat> excuse me, u to the fourth power over four 
plus u to the sixth power over six plus c because it is an indefinite integral. And then if I do um, back substitution, we end up with secant to the fourth power x, or I'm sorry, three x over four plus secant to the sixth power three x over four plus c. And then if we distribute our one third, we get secant to the fourth power of three x over 12 plus secant to the sixth power of three x over, oops, this should be a six. So over 18 plus C. Now we have one more problem. So this problem has um, It has tangent squared in the denominator, which means we cannot we cannot do du with a tangent in it. Okay, so that means u cannot be secant because then du would have to have a secant and a tangent, and I don't have this extra tangent. Um, And then I can't let u equal tangent because the derivative would be secant squared and I don't have a secant squared. So we can't do that. What we can do is change it back into sines and cosines and work it from there. So what we have here is we have one over cosine x over sine squared x over cosine squared x. And if you rewrite that or flip and multiply, however you want to think about that, you end up with cosine squared x over cosine x sine squared x. So then one of these cosines will reduce, leaving you with just cosine x over sine squared x. And then now you have a cosine x for du. So you're going to let u equal sine x and then du would be cosine x dx. So here we have <clears throat> this is u and then you end up with 1 over u squared or u to the negative 2 du. Apply your power rule you get u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c or negative 1 over u plus c which is the same as saying negative one over sine x plus c or negative cotangent x plus c. Not cotangent, cosecant.